Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Olumide Macaulay. On today's program, Senate rejects nomination of Mr. Ibrahim Magu as Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, citing security reports available to it. President Mohamedou Buhari arrives Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos, to, co to commission newly acquired and locally fabricated ships of the Nigerian Navy. And Kaduna State Government and the United States partner on developing education in the state. We begin in the nation's capital, Abuja, where lawmakers at the Senate have rejected the nomination of Mr. Ibrahim Magu, acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, as chairman. The Senate, in rejecting his confirmation, explains that security reports available to it shows that Mr. Magu is not fit to be the chairman of the EFCC. The Senate has sent back Mr. Magu's nomination letter to President Mohamedou Buhari, the letter of confirmation was sent to the Senate in July this year, and since then, the lawmakers refused to treat it. The President has arrived in Lagos to commission newly acquired and locally fabricated ships of the Nigerian Navy at the Naval Dockyard, Victoria Island, Lagos. NNS Unity, NNS Karadua, NNS Tug, and 27 locally built Epena boats were well, formally launched for use by President Mohamedou Buhari. The president who touched down at the presidential wing of the Murtala Mohamed International Airport just before noon was received by Lagos State Governor, Mr. Akil Miambode. He was also welcomed by heads of the military formations in the state and leadership of the Nigerian Police Command. The president's visit to Lagos is coming 24 hours after he presented the budget of 7.3 trillion naira to the joint session of the National Assembly in Abuja. In the meantime, reactions continue to reach the 7.2 trillion naira budgets of recovery presented by President Mohamed Buhari. State governments across the Federation may have their jobs cut out as a section of the appropriation bill has some responsibilities for the state CEOs. President Buhari is asking state governments across the Federation to be supportive of various federal government's agriculture development schemes. In 2016, we conducted a critical assessment of the power sector value chain, which is experiencing major funding issues. Although government through the CBN and development finance institutions has intervened, it is clear that more capital is needed. We must also resolve the problem of liquidity in the sector. On this part, government has made provision in the 2017 budget to clear its outstanding electricity bills. This, we hope, will provide the much needed liquidity injection to support the investors. Mr. Mohamedou Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, to the southwest, the Ogun State Government has commenced capacity building for farmers to boost the state's agriculture sector. At a training session held in Abokuta, the state capital, participants were asked to form cooperatives to gain access to loan facilities. They were also challenged to make themselves available for the different programs being initiated, being initiated by the state government. This is part of the plan of Senator Ibukunle Amosu to make sure we build capacity, especially amongst people who are young, people who are unemployed, and women especially. We want to make sure that women are well trained, the young people are well trained to take opportunities in agriculture. There are a lot of initiatives from the federal government and the state and development agencies to support our, de our desire to move from an oil economy to an agri economy. And this is how we're going to start training people to make sure that agriculture becomes a mainstay when it comes to occupation. 
in another five, ten years time, we should start seeing people saying that the choice occupation for Nigerians is agriculture. And we want to see many young millionaires and billionaires come out of agriculture in this state. So one of the things that we found out that we are lacking in is industry, industrial, like mechanization of farming. So these are the kind of places where you bring groups together and they form clusters so that they can exploit all these opportunities that are coming from the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Agriculture, and even the Central Bank. So once these people are done trading here, opportunities will come to them. Now we have their numbers, we have their email addresses, we know where to find them. When opportunities come that match the area that they have studied or shown an interest, then we can make sure that they are able to take advantage of those opportunities. In the spirit of the Yuletide, the Cross River State Government is subsidizing the monies to be paid for staple food following a huge rise in prices. The price of food stuff like rice, tinned tomatoes, groundnut oil and sweet corn will be lowered by 40% when purchased at the Tinapa Free Trade Zone. According to the State's Commissioner for Finance, Asuko Ekbayong, the government will bear the cost of the slash. Looking at the economic conditions, the current uh, hard realities facing the people of Nigeria and residents in Cross River State decided to subsidize the cost of uh, foodstuff for the Yuletide season. See, the Christmas season is one that uh, signifies family, uh, signifies some level of festivities and enjoyment. And uh, His Excellency, the Governor, uh, thought it wise to subsidize the cost of this foodstuff to make it more available and readily available for the good people of Cross River State. So what uh, the administration is doing is uh, subsidizing the cost, um, working with the operators in uh, Tinapa, the free zone, to bring down the costs of uh, or pay off some sort of a subsidy to the price of the goods. It's going to last to the month of December and early into the first week of January, as long as stock is available. But we have ensured that there will be enough stock to take us through. The idea is that throughout this festive season, no one should go hungry. There should be enough people to have and uh, for us to be able to generate revenue not just for Cross River State but even for the Federal Republic of Nigeria through uh, the Customs Agency. After 14 years of litigation, a federal high court sitting in Lagos on Wednesday awarded a 10, 10 billion Naira compensatory damages against oil giant Mobil producing Nigeria Unlimited. Uh, Justice Ibrahim Buba, who delivered the judgment, asked Mobil to pay 10 billion Naira in answer to the prayers of the fishing communities and cooperatives of Lagos, led by one chief, Emi Ajanaku, the court granted all the claims by the plaintiffs except the claim of interest. The plaintiffs were represented by a law firm of Babalaki and Co., and the, while the law firm of Ade Kwetu, Caxton Martins, Agwo, and Shegun represented the defendant. The suit was instituted in March 2002, and pursuant to the Idoho QIT mobile pipeline rupture in 1998, which resulted in the release of about 40,000 barrels of Kwa Ivo light crude oil. More legal matters. The Lagos state government is set to commence the prosecution of suspects linked to the collapse of a five-story building in Lekki, Lagos, which led to the death of 30 persons. The officer of the Lagos state attorney general and commissioner for justice said it has concluded its legal advice in it's now ready to prosecute a total of nine suspects deemed culpable in the incident which occurred on March the 8th, 2016. The move to prosecute follows the conclusion of investigations by the Nigeria Police Force and technical reports of relevant experts. The suspects are accused of failure to obtain planning permits contrary to the provisions of the urban and regional planning and development law and, and therefore development law and involuntary manslaughter. The property involved Horizon 1 extension was being developed by Lecky Gardens Estates Limited and Get Too Rich Investment Limited.